from Digital Oil and Gas. My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm joined today by Taylor Asseli, who is a tech entrepreneur here in Calgary. How are you Taylor, doing, Jeff? I'm really well, actually. Welcome to uh, welcome to Digital Oil and Gas. Thank you for having uh, me. I uh, so uh, this is probably the first time I've ever um, have done this kind of style uh, inside uh, Digital Oil and Gas. Um, but uh, I think a good way to start is for you to just tell uh, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, and uh, what your background is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm I'm uh, you know uh, what people would say a serial entrepreneur to say the least. Uh, come from a, a, a long line of entrepreneurs and, and business owners in the past, and um, you know my my business career started back when I was in my early twenties. Started uh, more so in a totally different industry, travel tourism. Um, where where was that based? In, in here in Alberta? Or? No, in Kelowna, BC. Kelowna, BC. I started a a tour company there that evolved into. Um, specifically transportation related. So I used to run and operate the Kelowna Airport Shuttle and, and all the services around the Okanagan and the interior, mountain bike tours and ski shuttles and wine tours and all that sort of and stuff. Caught, caught the entrepreneurial bug. Absolutely, absolutely. All so right. um, um, took a took a um, an opportunity uh, to change industries. Uh, came into oil and gas. Um, spent a little bit of time on a drilling rig, getting some 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 experience uh, in the field. When, and, and when was that? Uh, this would have been back in 2009, 2008, 2009. So, so downturn in 08. So we hit bottom in, in mid-2009. Mid so things began to pick up Absolutely. shortly after that. As right, you can, so ima as you can imagine, tourism was not at its prime at the time. <laughs> so uh, oil and gas, you know, um, uh, coming up to that time was, was definitely um, getting a lot of attention. Sure. Um, so, um, so came into oil and gas, got some experience, and found myself working for a major oil and gas company in supply chain, specifically materials management. Is that here in in Calgary or that was up, elsewhere? That was up in Sherwood Park, Alberta, up in Edmonton. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, field, so. A field service outfit or an oil company? It was an oil company. Oh, okay. Yeah, a major it, oil and gas right. company. So it had lay down yard and, and what, development or machine shop up there? Absolutely, yeah. So it was a, it was a huge uh, lay down yard, bone yard, whatever you want to call it, plus a warehouse. Um, a plethora of surplus inventory sitting there. Why? Good question. Good question. <laughs> why Jeffrey. would an oil and gas that company? That is a great question. Why would an oil and gas company have surplus inventory? It's well, at the a... time, I was brand new. I had no idea. So I, I, uh, I quickly realized um, um, a big contributing factor is lack of awareness. Right? Lack of awareness paired with lack of motivation to do anything about it. So as you can imagine, surplus inventory, surface, surface equipment in general was. A low priority, right? Um, paired with mm. uh, the luxury of um, um, procurement teams being able to buy at will, procure the heck out of anything they want. If well, you when, need when, one, yeah. you're going to buy 10. Right? Well, and that makes sense when you think about it. You don't want your project at risk because you short short shipped yourself, if you like. Absolutely. Right? So order two yeah. if you need one. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Um, and, and I can see that that would be a common practice uh, during boom times. So And now you end up with a laydown yard or a warehouse with chock-a-block with shelves and shelves of stuff. Yes. And that's what yeah. you were finding in Sherwood Park. Yeah, so that's yeah. what fell on my lap. We, uh, I was, I was responsible for a, for a large boneyard with with a lot of inventory. Um, <laughs> it's good to call it a boneyard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's exactly. <laughs> so it's what a little it bit was. of a yeah. cemetery. Yeah, right? it was cadaver it was. shop. And you know, one big misconception around this surplus is, uh, you know, there's traditionally been a negative connotation around the word surplus yeah. in the industry, where um, you know, um, everybody thinks it's field run or it's been. It's 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 well, damage damaged goods or secondhand yeah. or it's or it, it's unaccompanied by warranty or you don't understand the manufacturer's yeah. provenance and yeah. you know whether it's any good. So, Absolutely, yeah, you can see why yeah. why it would be called bones. Absolutely. So this yeah. wasn't the case, which was really surprising. A lot oh. of this was just true extra inventory, surplus inventory. Right? Okay, so give me an example of what you would find if you were, uh, you know, yeah. one of these yards. Would oh you find my like goodness! A, a yeah. fully operational. Yep. Um, a diesel uh, engine, a pump jack. What would you find? Absolutely. So uh, the, the 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 list is endless. So you know, my experience at that time, we as an example, we had five trailer mounted comp Bidel compression compression um, units that were valued at you know brand new four and a half million dollars each. And five of them. There's five of them sitting there, sitting like five nice little Ferraris <laughs> sitting there. Yeah. Um, separator packages, line heater packages, um, pump jack packages. Uh, 
is like it's endless it's endless flare stacks and tanks beyond tanks galore so right? you must so. Have, you decided you were going to do something about this obviously so absolutely so yeah. three things really blew me away one the value blew me yeah. away the yeah. the lack of uh, awareness externally um with other companies to kind of come and take advantage of this lack of motivation to to connect with them and and most importantly the lack of awareness internally internally nobody knew about this stuff except for our own supply chain group which you know we're we're supposed to know about it but i i would have thought if i were thinking about oil companies these days if i'm buying something i've got purchase orders and i got financial people all over me when i'm buying stuff are you saying that this stuff doesn't show up on on the book somewhere so it's amazing the difference between something that is an active piece of inventory and uh -huh. something that is non-active. Active, active piece... will take, get more attention, I'm guessing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Engine, so yeah, got to keep it running. That's right. Anything that's active, obviously, asset integrity plays a role. Um, you yeah. need to know, you know, from a compliance regulatory sure. standpoint, you just yeah, yeah, yeah. that more lights are shone on it. The second that item becomes non-active, or in other terms, inventory or surplus or whatever you want to deem it, right? Um, it's like a smoke bomb goes off, <laughs> it disappears and <laughs> disappears. nobody knows anything. Well, that makes sense yeah. too. You know, you're going to put maintenance dollars into something that's actually not doing anything because it doesn't right. it doesn't need maintaining. So you can see where, and then passage of time, people turn over, and then suddenly no one remembers that those assets are. You're there. absolutely right. right. So, right. Lack so how do you build? So how do you build a business around that? It's probably the well, that's a great question. question. Of the hour. That's yeah, a yeah. great question. Somebody should do that. <laughs> <laughs> which which you've done. You've called it Iron, Iron Hub. Yes, Iron Hub. Yeah. So we. we we started Iron Hub. Um, I mean, the concept behind Iron Hub was really started, you know, back when my times with that company and, and trying to generate some solutions around this. Mm -hmm. um, and we really started on the marketplace. I just simply trying to gain awareness around the items that were that were laying around in these boneyards. And, you know, it was a bit of a, a, a side thing. You know, we weren't 100% um, you know, invested into it, mm -hmm. um, but there was definitely a need and we were generating some interest. Um, there was always a bit of a side project, but as the years gone have have gone on and the landscape has drastically changed, you know, um, post uh, you know twenty fourteen, mm -hmm. and and the and the economic landscape has changed, um, the priority has risen. Right. Yeah. The, priority the, incent the incentive certain. when capital is short is you, if you've got uh, an asset you could convert to cash, and yes. then turn it into a productive asset, or if you could sell it. Yes. to someone who wants it to be a productive asset. Absolutely. The market's now ready for that. Absolutely. At least that's yeah. the hypothesis. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. Okay. So the opportunity is there. There's a lot of capital to be recovered, whether that's through redeployment or divestment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we knew that there was a huge opportunity laying within this inventory. Um, the problem was, is even if you have something that you think could sell, mm. um, there's a lot more to it than that. The ability to gain confidence of an item, mm. both internally and externally, is extremely difficult because nobody has any information on the items, right? I mean, that's uh, not that they don't have any information, but it's very difficult to gather the information. Yeah, it's one, it's one thing when it shows up in a pallet in the crate from the manufacturer exactly. with the yeah. warranty information and the packing list, yeah, exactly. and you ordered it, that's you've right. got high trust that, yeah. okay, this is what I, I expect. You'll still do your testing and commissioning, Absolutely. of course. Yeah. Now, I'll talk about something that's not in a crate, <laughs> <laughs> that's in a laydown yeah. yard in this queue somewhere. Yeah. And was and ordered by an engineer be, that yeah. worked for you five years ago. Five years ago, ago. Yeah. and you have no, no longer have the record. So, yeah, yeah you can see where you know how do you build the trust uh exactly. to get the cost the buyer to want to buy it and uh, the seller to recognize that it actually has value that's right yeah. absolutely so step one for us was really truly um living in the world of data capture and and managing this information because if you want to try and gain the confidence of of, an, of a new owner whether it's internal or, or an external buyer yeah. you need to have that data and, and 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 most of the companies we were approaching um there was a big fat donut. They had no information. They didn't, you know, they knew they had some items out in the field, but they didn't have any supporting information to, to, yeah. to gain the confidence. Yeah. So, so we took a big pivot or at least we, we created a parallel to, to, you know, helping guys buy and sell equipment. And we really started focusing on the internal inefficiencies, um, um, that were, that were, that were causing these big hurdles, um, uh, to facilitate the, the redeployment. So if I think about it, if I think about a <clears throat> uh, an oil company or or a company that has some surplus asset uh, mm -hmm. or surplus asset somewhere, your first order of business is to build an appropriate view of what that 
that that surplus asset inventory actually is. Absolutely. So, yeah, and absolutely. that would pick up things like I'm assuming diagrams and documentation, yep. anything you can find that would give you the. That's right. That's give right. You a profile of this. Yeah. Right. So uh, the usually information does live out there somewhere, mm. um, whether it's in the form of a of a document that's still in paper form or. You know, you're having to send a guy out to the field to take a couple more photos to bring some color commentary right, to what right, that right, line right. item on your current Excel sheet actually is. Yeah. Um, so, so it's there's a big effort and there's 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 a lot of hurdles to 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 pull down mm. regarding that data capture. And so we focus a lot on that. Um, but not only that, in in a, in in addition to the the data capture and the finding of all the information, it's having a place to put all of that information. And like so, a repository or a database of some kind? Absolutely. Some, something searchable, I presume, where it pulls in the different kinds exactly. of data. Right. Exactly, right, right, right. exactly. Okay. So Iron Hub, we always explain ourselves as a unique combination of services and technology. And so, right. we, yes, we provide the services to help you um, gather the data and bring all the data in, whether it's from your asset integrity team mm -hmm. or, or taking pictures from the field and, and, and whatnot, um, or anything that's currently existing from, yep. from Excel. We also um, have a repository and for you to house all that information. Mm. Um, not only does it act as a repository, you also are able to search for what you're looking for. You're also able to increase visibility internally so that other business units can kind of can come see yeah. and exhaust the internal surplus. So now does this, can you, I, I don't know if you do this, but do you make that visible to people who want to buy surplus equipment? How does that work? Yeah, so to a I mean, degree. You, you know yeah. what I mean? To really make this work, right? You, you, right. Want to, yeah. you want to get as many eyeballs on that surplus inventory as possible, not just inside the company, but outside the company. Absolutely. So even though our number one priority is to help companies redeploy and, 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 and clean up and, and be fully aware of what they have, yep. we, every single time we take a look at a at an inventory list there's always stuff that they're never going to use right and so mm -hmm. once inventory yeah, change is exhausted, a, change a line of business for instance right i'm no longer doing that line of business or that that's right right i've that's gone right. from sour to sweet gas yeah i've got all this sour equipment like, exactly. what, am I, what am i going to do with it absolutely right, right. so as you know this industry is extremely extremely good at procuring <laughs> it is terrible at divesting, yeah. right? And that's yeah. not to the fault of, 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 of the industry. It's it's just not in their nature, right? right. It's not traditional behaviors of, have facilitated procurement, not divestment. And, and as a result, um, you know. It's a good question, so, actually. I'm trying to think back the last time I bumped into an oil industry executive whose title was chief divestment officer. Right. right? <laughs> if there is a chief divestment officer, he's actually an M&A. Yes. Or she's an M&A, and yeah. their job is to sell business units, but not actually clean up the assets that might be on the books that are yeah, absolutely uh, right. right. The focus right, is right. always on the reservoir under the yeah. uh, in the ground, as to the, the bright, land. Shiny objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's, and, and and the surface objects just kind of come with it all. Right? So can you? I mean, how does give me a practical example of where the you, you sort of brought the service and the technology together, and you know, client client said, "Wow, that that yeah. that was great." Absolutely. So, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different examples I could uh, present, but um, as of late, something that's kind of top of mind, we uh, were working with a company, they knew that they had a whole bunch of inventory out in the field that had been acquired through a recent acquisition, mm -hmm. um, you know, all new inventory to them, but there was no, well, I shouldn't say no, there's very, very little information on all of the items. So we went out, um, helped them catalog on the inventory, bring a little bit more you know, awareness as to what exactly is out there, mm. um, help them define what they had no use for. Mm. Um, and, uh, um, and then we connected those pieces of inventory to whom we already knew had an appetite for those items inside that company or outside, outside of that company. company yeah ah, so, so the first some, step was to redeploy first you find, yeah find yep. get find the market inside yep. and then go find the market outside if Absolutely. There was a market, uh, you, could, you could see where there was some value outside. That's right. right. And so that's yeah. where this magical bridge yeah, 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 is yeah, created yeah. Yeah. where, you know, um, wouldn't it be nice to just be able to click a button in your internal inventory and expose it to the world? But not only just the world, I mean, that's pretty broad, but oh. expose it to those who have an appetite for that item. So. So, so Amazon, if I think about Amazon and other commerce sites, right, what, yeah. what they have is this beautiful inventory that's built by their sellers, right? Yeah. And our oil companies don't have that. So but what Amazon does do really well is sell stuff. Why wouldn't Amazon come into this area? Is it because it's too niche, too specialized, too industrial? Like what's... What would what, what what makes it special? Why why Iron Hub and not Amazon? You know what this this industry is very uh, specific. It's it's very technical. Um, you know, a, a a BlackBerry phone is 
is or sorry blackberry that's a terrible example an iphone <laughs> sorry i don't know why i said blackberry well, um, iPhone <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even exist anymore yeah. um <laughs> they do a phone just just a cell like a, a, a smartphone um that make and model is consistent across the board right that's true it might be a different mass, color mass produced might be a different Long color mass yeah. produced yeah um you know a, a 24 inch separator package that's sour service and um has all these different little bells and whistles and is engineered to a specific spec it needs that level of personal touch and it needs, yeah. it's, it's a challenge, right? It's right. a challenge. Yep. You know, you, I could also ask why is Ritchie brothers not in the oil and gas space as deeply as they are now? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. right. The, if you're going to put oil and gas infrastructure back into service, yeah. you, you need to have a higher level of confidence and trust in that, that, that asset. Cause you're, you're on the hook for anything that goes wrong. Exactly. And right. this, this industry is very risk um, adverse very right? when risk it comes risk, to yeah. technical, tech, technical yeah, so uh, applications. For, I'm waiting for the first engineer to walk into the boardroom yeah. and say, I bought this off Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. You guys, are, <laughs> you get, this will work. Yeah, I got it from deal Amazon. I got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not exactly. Yeah. So there, there's, um, you know, again, this l- ability to gain confidence in a new owner is very challenging. And that yeah. is, um, that is due to you know highly technical specifications that each and every piece of equipment has, and not only that, it's integrity, right? Even though it meets the whole the spec of exactly what you're looking for, you know, is it when was the last time it was inspected? Is it you know is you know is is it actually fit for redeployment yeah. or how yeah, much yeah, work yeah, needs yeah. to go into it? And, um, and and so being able to avoid that risk or mitigate that risk is very difficult. So that's where Iron Hub is a sort of we we uh, you know we position ourselves. Um, to to basically act as that crutch for oil and gas companies to mitigate that risk for yeah, them, whether it's on the selling side or the buying side. Yeah. Um, but it all starts in having full awareness of that item and having the supporting documentation um, ready to go to, yeah. to support it. To so where, it. where where if I were if I were uh, listening to this podcast and I wanted to go find you, where mm-hmm. what would I look for? Ironhub.ca. Yeah. So, com, y- io. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good question. <laughs> so we have a website. Just our our, our basically messages what we're what we're doing um, specifically to our internal you know helping the this industry solve out some of their internal inefficiencies around mm-hmm. divestment and redeployment yep. and, and materials management in general. It's um, www.theironhub.com. Dot com. The Iron Hub dot com. The Iron Hub dot com. Got yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and do you have a Twitter account or are you on Facebook or any no, other? No, no, not, uh, not your LinkedIn. We're LinkedIn? on LinkedIn. Yeah, you sure. can find us on LinkedIn. <clears throat> Same um, name, I assume. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And uh, and so we're we're just we're you know we've we've been. Um, you know, walking before we run, we we're really building this on the shoulders of this industry, and 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 gaining the feedback of what they're telling us adds value to them, both you know engineers and 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 financial groups and and operations groups and guys in the field. Um, so, you know, if there's one thing that we don't want to do is 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 come out of the blocks in a full open-handed sprint and and just fall on our faces. So, <laughs> yeah. um, as a serial entrepreneur, uh, you know, I've learned that many times over, right? Um, and, and so it seems to be working. We're getting a lot of good feedback. Um, more and more opportunities are presenting themselves. Um, abandonments, um, just just the new light being shone um, compliance-wise on mm. stranded assets and just this heightened need to better understand what you have in the field. Even if you don't want to sell anything, just for internal purposes, um, um, is becoming a, a more apparent topic of discussion yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and so we have the ability to uh, facilitate those questions and, 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 and help these companies out so it seems to be so far so, so far so good so far so good yeah brilliant thanks very much for that you've been listening to a podcast from uh, digital oil and gas you can find us on itunes spot uh, stitcher and iHeartRadio. and if you like what you've heard um, please press the like button so that other people can find us 